Hi guys, welcome back for another video. If you're new here, my name is Bailey and I would love for you to subscribe to follow along for more videos like this. Today we're going to do a bake with me. I saw this recipe on TikTok, I think last week, and it is by Easy Gay Oven. It's his chocolate chip cookie recipe. He titled it the best ever chocolate chip cookie recipe, but he updated it from last year. So he says this one is even new, even better, newer and improved. And they looked so delicious. And so I just had to try them. And tonight we are having our friends over for dinner. And so I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and make them today and then have all of us taste test them tonight so we can all give a rating and see how good they actually turn out. But I'm really excited to make these because they look so good. I will show you what they look like. Here's what they look like. They look so good. First, I'm gonna get the ingredients together and I wrote them down on this little note card so it would just be easier for me. So, first things first is to put on the apron so we don't get our clothes messed up. And I also used my, I had a Starbucks free drink today, or I've had it for like a month, but I was saving it for when I really wanted like a venti size something. And I got this and it is so good. My favorite Starbucks drink is pumpkin cream cold brew, but lately the ones I've been getting just have not been good. Like, I don't know what it is, but if you drink Starbucks, then you know that you can't count on Starbucks to be consistent in the way they make things and so I've just been really disappointed lately. So I got the vanilla sweet cream cold brew with vanilla cold foam on top and this is delectable. So I'll be drinking this throughout as a little afternoon pick me up while we're making cookies. So the first step is to melt the butter in a saucepan over low heat and then set aside to cool slightly. I'm just going to melt it in a bowl so that way I don't have to heat up the stove and everything. And it is 14 tablespoons of butter. Putting my butter in the bowl. And then we're just going to melt it for like... 30 seconds at a time until it's melted all the way. Something about me is that anytime I'm cooking or anywhere in the kitchen, I always have to have a dish towel and I use multiple at a time. I just feel like my hands are always getting dirty. I always have to have this. And these are also the best ones. They're so absorbent. They're from Amazon. While the butter is melting, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of our other ingredients out. So we have all-purpose flour, baking soda, baking powder, salt, sugar, brown sugar, an egg, vanilla extract, and then chocolate. Here's what the butter looks like. And so I'm just gonna set it aside so it can cool. Step two says in a small mixing bowl, whisk together the flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. So to be completely honest, I normally skip this step and just add in the butter, the sugars, egg, vanilla, and then I'll just like add all of these things, kind of whisk it on the top of that mixture and then mix it all together. But for the sake of this recipe and the cookies turning out exactly how this guys do, I'm going to follow all of the instructions. So I'm gonna grab a mixing bowl It says to mix together flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. So we need two and a fourth cup of flour, three fourths teaspoon baking soda, one fourth teaspoon baking powder, and a teaspoon of kosher salt. First, we're gonna measure our flour. This is two and a fourth cup of flour. So I'm gonna show you guys how to measure your flour. So you get it like this, and then you take the top of it, and you kind of like spread your knife over it like that, and then you have your first cup. I actually learned that on TikTok. 
I'm sure you guys, if you're if you're ever on Baking Talk, then I'm sure you've seen that older lady. I mean, she's not old, but she is always showing how to correctly measure your flour, and it really does make a difference. So that's two cups, and then we'll do two and one fourth cup. Something to know about me is that chocolate chip cookies are my weakness. I actually didn't like cookies at all for the first 21 years of my life. I only started liking them recently and it has just changed my life. They're just so good. It's my favorite dessert. I just love them. Okay, next we have 3 fourths teaspoon of baking soda. So. 3 4 teaspoon of baking soda. Let's get that. And then we have 1 4 teaspoon of baking powder. And then 1 teaspoon of kosher salt. So it's going to be a little hard for me to measure because... I need to refill our little salt um, shaker, but it's fine if there's a little extra salt because I like my cookies salty. And then it says to whisk this together, but I'm just going to use my knife, which is so inefficient. But just for the sake of not, for the sake of not dirtying up another dish. After that, it says step three is to whisk together the brown and granulated sugars and then pour in the melted butter. We're gonna do half a cup of granulated sugar and I'm gonna use my KitchenAid mixer for this, but you know, you could use another mixing bowl and just mix it with your hand. And then we have one cup of dark brown sugar. dark brown sugar that I got. It's actually the only one that they had in the store. So it says one cup of dark brown sugar, lightly packed. So I'm assuming that means you just don't press it down too much. Um, maybe about like that much. Whoops, almost just poured it into the wrong thing. And then it says to whisk those together. There's what it looks like with just the sugars mixed together. Next it says pour in the melted butter and stir until just combined. So pour in that butter from earlier. And then after that, it says to whisk in the egg and vanilla until the mixture is smooth and creamy. Then whisk vigorously until it lightens in color. We need one egg, which I don't have yet. Okay, one egg. And then two teaspoons of vanilla. And then it says to whisk until the mixture is smooth and creamy, then whisk vigorously until it lightens in color. I don't know why, but I'm honestly shocked at how much that lightened in color. But here it is, kind of light and fluffy. Step four says using a rubber spatula, fold the flour mixture into the wet ingredients until just a few streaks of flour remain.
The batter got a little too thick for me as I was folding it with the spatula near the end there and so I just put it I put the paddle back on and then mixed it on the lowest speed and it worked fine. So that's what that looks like. The next step is to chop your chocolate and then add the chocolate in. So this guy recommends getting a chocolate bar and then chopping it that way. But what's more inexpensive for me and then also works perfectly fine is buying these semi-sweet chocolate chunks and then just taking these and chopping them up so that way you still get like the flaky chocolate all throughout and then you also still have the big chunks and so i always do this and it always turns out amazing and he calls the recipe calls for 10.5 ounces and this is 11.5 but honestly the more chocolate the better so that's also not going to make probably any difference in the recipe so we're going to chop this up and then pour it into the mixture to secure the bowl back in place and then mix this on the lowest setting just until the chocolate is evenly distributed. This dough looks so good, but honestly all cookie dough looks so good. Looks so yummy. Here's a close up of it, it looks delicious. And if you've watched any of my other Bake With Me videos, you know Next, we have to do a taste test to see what the dough tastes like. I like the dough. It's really sweet. It's a lot sweeter than other cookie doughs that I've made. It was also interesting. Like, I didn't taste the salty flavor until the end of that bite, but I'm sure it's going to be delicious. Next step says to measure out 2.5 tablespoons for each cookie to form about 18 dough balls. Chill the dough balls uncovered in the refrigerator for two hours which is perfect because it's 2.48 right now and our friends are coming over around like 5 or 5.30 and I want dinner to be done at 6. So I might have them chill just for a little bit longer than two hours, but I feel like the longer they chill, usually the better they do. And so we will go ahead and measure those out. so good and mine made about let's see 17 dough balls i'm actually surprised because i feel like my scoops were big but i guess mine are exactly the right size i'll show you a little closer they look so beautiful so delicious i can't wait to try them now it's time to stick them in the fridge for a couple hours and then i will get them out later bake them i'll show you how they turn out and then our friends are gonna help us, help me and Drew rate them. So hopefully they're good, but I'm gonna stick them in the fridge. And I'll see you guys in a couple hours. The cookies are finished and we're gonna do a taste test. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. That was a good, good pull. That looked really good. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was amazing. Very doughy. Okay, we're all gonna give it a rating from zero to 10. Personally, I would cook the cookie a little bit longer. It's a little bit too soft for me, but the flavor, phenomenal. Nine out of 10. Wow. It's really good. I would give it 
an 8.5 out of 10. I also really like gooey cookies, so I like how it's baked. And we did bake it according to how long that the recipe said. Alright, I agree with Anaya. I um, don't really like gooey cookies, so I would like it a little bit more, but I'm going to go 8.8. Eight. Mm, wow. Like 8.8 out eight, of 10? Yes, 8.8 out of 10. That was two separate. I love how chocolatey and moist. <laughs> <laughs> For chocolatiness and gooiness, I would give this cookie a 9.25 out of 10. Because it's hard to make a better cookie than that, I think. So as you saw, those cookies were really good. And Drew said that he likes them better than like any cookies that I've made. So I would definitely recommend making those. And they were not hard. It's just like basic ingredients except the dark brown sugar maybe but very delicious. I would highly recommend those. I will definitely add this recipe to my recipe box because these are super good. Thank you guys so much for watching another video of mine. If you enjoyed it, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this. I'm so grateful for you watching and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.